Zechariah all the way through the minor and major prophets, Jesus Christ was always prophesied to come. And they always prophesied of the last days or his return. It will always be prophesied in advance. Jesus. But this thing written in the book that was handed here was not revealed then. But God is revealing it now. Can somebody say yeah. amen? This is a different time, praise the Lord. And the Bible said, and I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it. And eat it up. It shall be make thy belly, belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Now let me just say something right now. He said, I took the little book out of the angel's hand. I ate it up. It was in my mouth sweet as honey. But as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Can you say amen? Lord, amen. Now let me just say to you right now. Right now you're in the last days. You're in the time that's as the approaching of the coming of the Lord. Every sign in that Bible is playing out before your very eyes. Let me just tell you something. In Texas, a second person just got Ebola. This, this individual worked at the same hospital with the first man, Thomas Duncan, who died. It was one of the workers, might have been a nurse, don't know, they haven't released that. But whoever it was, wore the gown, wore the gloves, wore the mask and the goggles and the hazmat, did everything you're supposed to do, and yet still contracted the Ebola virus. Now, my wife Heidi's been teaching for over eight weeks on the Ebola virus. She said, Paul, the Lord has showed me they can do all the, all the uh, yeah. protocol that they want. They yeah. can rely on medication to the best of their ability. But the only way you're going to overcome Ebola is by the blood Woo! of Jesus Christ. Woo! Hallelujah! I said to her, I said, wait a minute, don't you think that she said, listen, that God's going to get the glory because with the, the people who did get Ebola and lived, the doctor and the other lady, the nurse, were both devout Christians. Yes. And they gave all the glory to God. Hallelujah. They didn't come out yes. and praise Woo! anybody. Woo! They didn't mention any Woo! special drug they took. They didn't even talk praise about the doctors. Lord. They said, Woo! appreciate all you did, but we give all the glory for the healing Woo! to Jesus Christ. Woo! When man tries to steal the glory from God, God is angered by this. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For he sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. The water has turned blood red 17 times in 17 different places around the world since August 1st of 2011. On, on uh, March the 11th, 2011, there was a massive earthquake, the fifth largest earthquake in the history of the world hit Japan. It shook the ground in Tokyo, they said, for six minutes. I had, there was an earthquake in Alaska just a few weeks ago, and there was two people in our chat room, God, God bless all of you out there, that were actually in Alaska when the earthquake hit, and it shook them. The one lady said things went flying off the walls and off the cabinets. The other lady said it just shook the ground. Her and her kids ran out in the yard as the ground was shaking. They knew this was a quake. They, could, they happened to be live. They called in. We talked to them on the air live. You could hear their voice. No way did they understand an earthquake was coming. They had no idea that that moment it was coming. The Bible tells us that there's already going to be earthquakes in diverse places. But when the earthquake hit Japan, it shook Tokyo for six minutes. And then about a half hour later, a tsunami came racing toward the, 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 the island of Japan at about over 700 miles an hour. When it hit the island, it moved the island eight feet, according to the GPS, eight feet from where it was at. It literally, the, the tsunami was so powerful, it came all the way inland for six miles, killing over 26,000 people, and it left six nuclear reactors melting down at Fukushima. God was trying to send a message that these are the end times, and yet people still curse his name and, and stick their fist in the face of God and refuse to re repent. But the Bible said that they will gnaw their tongues for pain. 
in the last days and refuse to repent. And they will try to hide in the rocks and the mountains from the face of him that sits on the throne. But they cannot stop it. Jesus is coming. You cannot stop it. Can you say a word? We just had our second blood moon this week. We were so privileged, actually, in Indiana and all across America. And that morning, it was so perfect. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was beautiful. And Heidi got up early, grabbed a camcorder, set it up, and said, Are you, aren't you going to get up, Buster? We got a blood moon out here. I said, What? Are you serious? So I got up. I went out there onto the patio. She zoomed in on the blood moon, and we... We watched it for about 45 minutes. She filmed it. It's on our YouTube video. It's very awesome. And I was sitting there thinking, this is the second of four blood moons. And we're going to reflect on everything that happened since the first blood moon. It's unbelievable. The fact that Russia had already invaded Crimea, took over Crimea, and had already and is still in invasion of eastern Ukraine, which is actually fulfillment of Ezekiel 38, the reestablishment of Magog. So that demon, that principality, Gog, reestablishing an ancient place of, of evil, Gog, of course, that spirit is a, is a literally a, the same spirit that was in Nimrod who built the Tower of Babel, and they were trying to build this tower all the way to heaven. God saw that they had the technology to do it, so he confounded their languages so that they couldn't do it. What's going on today? We've just built another one world tower in New York City. Instead of recognizing that America's under attack from a spiritual demon of radical Islam, America continues to hold hands and dance with the devil instead of repenting and coming to Jesus Christ. Our lawmakers have got to a point where they are more interested in filling their pockets full and deceiving the American public. The Luciferians, the global elitists, the demons of hell are operating in high places. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. But I'm here to tell you, our warfare is not carnal, but it's mighty through God to the point of bringing every thought into the captivity of Christ. I'm telling you right now, the church, this last day church, will be more powerful than even the early church because we're getting ready for the power of the Lord. Revival is going to break out everywhere. It's going to break it. You cannot stop what God is doing. The gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the middle of the greatest revival. There are diseases breaking out. And besides Ebola, that's killed over 4,000 people in the west part of Africa. There is a, a virus called the dengue uh, fever in China. It's got over 13,500 cases. That's 19 times more than ever in history. There's a mosquito virus called Kunakunja. I'm not talking in tongues. I'm just trying to get that word. This thing is so bad that a half a million people have been bitten by mosquitoes all across the Caribbean islands. They run a high fever, joint pain, deathly ill. And I got an email even this week that said, now it's spreading through Jamaica like crazy. And this lady wrote me a letter and she said, Pastor, since you were here, we've got a plague here. Every, they say it's not that bad. She said, every other household, somebody's sick. It's literally everywhere. And they're burning up with fevers. Their joints, they can't hardly move. This thing is sweeping the Caribbean islands as we speak. In Nigeria, there's been a case of Marburg, which is another type of hemorrhagic, hemorrhagic disease that, that causes you to get the fever just like Ebola. There's plagues also. Pakistan recorded this year the highest amount of polio cases in history. There's even a flu spreading through America as we speak called the Introvirus 68. 900 kids were in a hospital in, in Denver, Colorado in one weekend. It spread through 44 states. Kids are running fevers and nine of them have been paralyzed. Five of them have died from what's supposed to be the common flu. Someone said, Pastor, what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. The Lord's about ready to come back. Let 
the redeemed of the Lord say so. So he said, I took the little book. And I took it out of the angel's hand. And as I ate it up, it was in my mouth sweet as honey. But as soon as I eat it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings.